Hey, yo, it's me. It's me. It's the R-A-V. Uh, look, uh, if you listen to Hillcast, Kyle and myself kind of kick things off. Uh, towards the end, we were talking about two big departures, and uh, we decided that we were just going to leave it at that and not mention the names on the actual show. For those of you uh, that wanted to actually check out the names, we're doing this little brief segment. Now, unfortunately, Kyle could not join me. We just couldn't get our schedules on track, but I did do one even better. I went and got two more people. Uh with me here today for this uh, little excursion is uh, Impact Dude. Is, is it, I'm sorry, man. It's been so rusty, and I know you used to joke with you about this, but is it Impact Dude or we at Global Wrestling Network Dude? Uh, I, it's not Global Wrestling Network Dude, but it's probably still Impact Dude. They haven't changed their name again yet, have they? Or did I miss that spoiler? Uh, maybe you're, are you the NWA TNA Dude? or How about Noah Dude or... I don't know. Ooh, How about that? Noah, Noah, dude. Dude. The Twitch Noah dude. dude. The, the Twitch dude. Twitch dude. There you go. That's actually pretty appropriate. I think I kind of think like a Twitcher kind of works, but it kind of sounds like Tweaker. But, uh, you know, someone just uh, chimed in and ruined his, his entrance. But <laughs> I've got a rarity on the line here. It's about as, uh, for, in Heelcast terms, it's about as frequent as a spotted unicorn. But I got the return of Griggs. Griggs, uh, I know Count's marking out uh, everyone else is, but Griggs, what's up, buddy? I'm doing well. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, I saw Count, or well, I didn't see Count, but I talked to Count briefly today. He was on the uh, the Twitch chat room there watching some uh, uh, Impact Wrestling on there, and uh, he was having a good old time. Well, there's technically, a, this is a Twitch, spoiler show, right? There's a Twitch chat room? Yeah, the, the whole Twitch app has like a chat room while you're watching the video. You can chat with each other and... And the thing is, I still don't even know what the fuck Twitch actually is. It's just a streaming network, basically. They could show live stuff, they could show old stuff, and they were... It's, did you ever watch Pluto TV? It's the same thing. It's video games, though, right? Yeah, I think so, but um, yeah. they have, they stream sports and stuff now, too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. Sorry to literally 99.99% of wrestling fan audience. I don't play fucking video games at all, don't like them, so... Um, I, I guess I don't know too much about it. Maybe that's why. Yeah, I think they're just trying to expand, and you know, they're going the wrestling route and sports and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it doesn't seem. I just downloaded it today. It doesn't seem that too bad. Yeah, I hit it up on my uh, computer to find that barbed wire massacre that they were saying was on it. Yeah. And I, I was real disappointed because there was nothing there, but I did find it on the Global Wrestling Network, and that's how I know about Twitch. Because wait, barbed wire massacre three is already on GWN and stuff. No, just oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, two is two is so one and two. Oh, yeah. okay. I thought you meant mm-hmm. like uh, a new one coming out that we're not but, sure if it's gonna be on pop or not. But Raven Effect, I will tell you that that Har- House of Hardcore is on Twitch. I I actually heard that from Kyle, and I know Kyle's a. I actually, fan I think it's on right now. Actually, oh, I watched the taped ones. I'm feeling like uh, you know, we'll be seeing some sort of House of Hardcore stuff here at some point. Um, hint, hint. But uh, yeah, so we're not gonna. Talk too many spoilers, but obviously, uh, you know, we're going to spoil a couple of names. We're also going to talk about a couple other things we didn't plan to. Um, you guys ready to dive right in here? Or we got more Twitch talk first. Do it, man. I'm twitched out already. All right. Um, you know what? I will admit I, I got the fucking fight network, though. Um, my global wrestling network, I, I'll just say this. Like, I had uh, say it said something like, like, did you guys get the survey in, the, in your email for the global wrestling network? I don't know if anyone else did. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it said, where do you watch it? And it was like, oh, shit, because they mentioned Fire Stick, so I tried to do that, and I, I did a search for Global Wrestling Network. Uh, it didn't pop up, but it took me to FightNet, and FightNet, I mean, basically has almost the exact same thing. So I'm fucking with that right now. Uh, I haven't spent a whole lot of time watching it, but I did watch um, Turning Point 2008, I believe, the other day. So, yeah, just bringing in that revenue for uh, for the Global Wrestling Network and Impact. Let's do it. All right, guys, um, look, we, we're talking about the two big names that are departing, and actually, I mean, not a huge name, but there is a third. But there's two other things I want to mention that I, I'm not sure uh, if we've seen the last of an Impact Wrestling or not. So these tapings that came up, uh, Dan Lambert and American Top Team were nowhere to be found. Uh, obviously, that means the KM push or whatnot. It doesn't seem like KM uh, with the ADT thing is going to be lasting. And maybe he's, may, I, like, I assume they're gone and done for. The only thing that, that really kind of bothers me about this more than anything, uh, other than the fact that I think Dan Lambert is a good manager and great talker, a good heel. We saw the, really the last legend left other than Abyss and James Storm. Um, the way that he went out on Impact Wrestling Television was 
to not even continue having this guy on TV uh, and to be gone and drop it, I think that's that's a big fucking insult to James Storm. Uh, I don't know if you guys kind of if that had clicked with you yet or if you feel the same way, but um, Greg's anything to chime in on that one? I'm sorry, man. It, it was my recordings fading in and out. Oh, gotcha. So, Greg, I mean, do you have anything that, to follow up, Greg's, with uh, the D? We're losing Raven effect, man. <laughs> well, is it him or is it us? I thought it's it's him, man. I'm, I'm here. You're here. Just screw it. Screw it. So this is typical heel cast. So, so Greg, seriously, man, uh, James Storm, what are your thoughts on the way that he left? I mean, I'm sure he had to have some kind of say into it. I mean, I don't – do I personally like the way he jobbed out? No. Um, I mean, I, I thought it was pretty creative that, you know, they they, they had everyone take a shot at him. Um, I don't think it was a way of bringing – putting KM over. I mean, I don't know if KM – will get over any any way he tries. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not I'm not a big fan of Cam. I don't know. He's just he's just another guy. I, I just don't feel like he he has the it factor like some others. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm dead on with you on Cam. The the it factor is just not there. He he's a big guy. He's got a decent look, but there's an it factor that's missing. But I'll tell you right now, James Storm. There's a guy that had the it factor in a major way. And it was never really, you know, uh, dealt with properly. They kind of, they, they, they kind of just forgot about him at times, and, and it was ridiculous. I, I thought it was, it was probably the the worst eggs that I've ever seen. Uh, could very well be the worst wrestling television I've ever watched. Uh, they didn't put KM over. They didn't put American Top Team over. They didn't put Bobby Lashley over because James Storm pretty much ran through all of them. But yeah. they didn't put James Storm over either because James Storm just kept getting beat down. And eventually it was just beer bottle, beer bottle, and he sort of fell to the ground. And that was the lasting impression of, uh, of James Storm. So, uh, Raven Effect, you got anything else, man? Are you back? Can you guys hear me for one? Yeah. No, say something else. <laughs> All right, yeah. Obviously, I can't be heard. Um, I, I actually stayed on the line. I didn't realize I was cut out. Uh, I mean, as far as worst wrestling television that you've ever seen, I don't know if I'm going to go that far, considering uh, TNA did have a 2014, the first six months of it, under John Gaburek. Uh, there was some Mike Awesome fat lady thriller stuff that has been worse. Um, Grado exists, but yeah, it was, uh, you know, I, like as far as KM, I don't know if he's going to be like he has the potential to be huge or anything. I just feel like he should be better than, you know, jobbing all the time. Uh, I think there's some potential there. I just don't, I don't see main event or like top tier guy by any means. I'm not saying that, but I, I felt like he should get a little bit better of a, a booking than what he had been getting. But I mean, it's for, yeah, like, the James Storm thing, dude, it was it was bad to start with. Um, I just feel for them to not even fucking continue it with ATT, and that was how they wrote this guy off out of everyone was just a. It's such an insult and slap in the face. And then, like I've heard that WWE doesn't want the guy, it doesn't want James Storm, and it's just I mean for him to want to come back after the way that they wrote him off, because uh, look, we could fucking use him, and uh, it's just it, it sucks. And I wouldn't know that I would want to come back if I were him if that were the case, especially for them to not use ATT. But I mean. Even if they were going to continue, uh, it was terrible the way that that went down with the beer bottles, the double beer bottle and all. Um, I mean, you could have had the guy challenge Eli Drake and put his career up or something along those lines and just let him go out, you know, in a blaze of glory, have one great, really good final match. Um, I, what I do hope, dude, is they make a The Essential James Storm DVD, but unless he goes to WWE and gets on, like, a main roster, I doubt the company will do that, which is disappointing. Raven, you don't think he's going to go to the... I've figured he'd be in NXT, but from what I I read somewhere that like Triple H told James Storm that they're no longer have interest in the guy, which you know, not surprised that uh, told him the door was open, and then when it was ready again, uh, WWE was a fucking snake about it because you know. it seems like he wants the he wants any talent they can get from uh, Impact after they have that that main event rub. <laughs> so uh, well, I wouldn't be he's, surprised. He's wrestling that Aerolouge uh, promotion. That's what he's advertised for right now. Oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. But what are they running? Just a couple of house shows, and that's it. I don't know what the deal is, but they're they're basically going to be a, uh, a, a, a um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, a lucha uh, underground type of replacement type thing. They're going to be very similar to Lucha Underground, and they're filming uh, in Nashville, and you know, Storm Nashville, 
Yeah. So he he's, he's advertised for those shows, and that's my guess as to where he is now. I assumed he was NXT bound, but uh, once I read that, it was like, well, if he was NXT bound, he wouldn't be advertised for those shows. He'd be headed to NXT. Yeah. So I would look for him to be a top star there, which unfortunately, apparently, they also have my personal favorite, Rebby Hardy, as well. So, well, who knows? Wait, Aaron Lou's like that fucking marketing company or whatever it was is they got like an indie promotion now that's gonna uh, be like lucha no the other era luge okay well you know it could be, <laughs> era, era, it could be an era luge era Loom mattress and that's actually sadly when you said era luge i thought of era Loom, the mattress which is a fine and dandy mattress by the way you can get them at denver mattress um that that was what came to my mind but i i just didn't even realize that they were doing this um you know i would think I, like maybe Storm would want to go to the NWA, but it didn't seem like Billy Corgan did too well with him either. You know, so I don't know. But. Have what an empty uh, arena match? <laughs> I feel like never mind. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to burn <laughs> on Impact too much. Uh, sorry, Impact. I'm saving you there, but yeah. Who, who doesn't want to see that uh, Billy Corgan empty arena match? Because I kind of feel uh, he'll get less people to show up for his shows than they did for Impact shows. Um. You know, speaking of like uh, indies and impact shows and whatnot, uh, one guy that was the other guy that was really missing from these tapings that that's a bummer to me. Chris uh, Masters. Yes. <laughs> although he, so Chris Masters slash Adonis will actually be on these tapings, but uh, you know we are going to see the end of Count's favorite wrestler, uh, second favorite wrestler with Grado. Um, but uh, Desmond Xavier, winner of the Super X Cup, uh, the guy that should really. This young new guy that we've—I feel like everyone thinks should be kind of the future, the face of this X division, a uh, guy that we could really carry this company on his back for a long time. Uh, Desmond didn't show up at all. Uh, from I—I I heard from Old School Hill, he said that he feels or he thinks that uh, Desmond Xavier left Impact to work Dragons Gate USA, DG USA. I have no idea why uh, DG USA would be more appealing full time than than Impact Wrestling. Something that puts you on TV. But, uh, I mean, I don't know if he had a previous booking and that was all. I would still feel like uh, your Impact Wrestling booking would be more important than Dragon's Gate. So, uh, Impact Dude, anything here on, on the lack of Desmond Xavier? Sucks. <clears throat> Sucks. This is a guy that they need to start building that division around. So, as long as he's still on the roster page, then I think we're probably all right. But they need to build the roster around him. But I'll tell you this much. If this was pre-known, this was known ahead of time, and this was known in advance, this explains why he never got the title shot and the, the title of in the last settings. I mean, if you remember the last set of tapings, we were saying, why aren't they giving this kid the strap? Why isn't he cashing in this, this, this championship match and winning it, right? Well, this could be why if he wasn't booked there. And this is the new this is the new impact wrestling, folks. This is the way it's gonna be. Sometimes they're gonna be there, sometimes they're not. Yeah, I just, than, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, I was gonna say more than likely he gets his bookings through impact anyways, or they go through book impact. So he probably was just booked previously and impact just let him go. Yeah, it's it's just like a long time to keep the guy off a of TV and you know, the X division. Uh, it's gonna be getting its I mean, I don't feel like the exhibition is being used the way that it was, you know, kind of getting that push back again with Jarrett uh, when he first came back in. But I mean, the exhibition is not the joke off TV that has no idea what it's supposed to be like it was the previous few years. But yeah, I feel like this guy should really be who the company is focusing around. And you think about like him against Seidel, him against Petey Williams. Uh, there's there's so many good, really good matches, I feel, that we could have got with Desmond Xavier. And, you know, the other thing to bring up is the Super X Cup. Uh, I hope that that's kind of a mainstay that they bring back. But for Desmond Xavier to to be gone, I mean, it just, what was the fucking point in the Super X Cup? I mean, the fact that they weren't given the guy the push to start with uh, after winning all that, but it's literally just, why should we care about the Super X Cup again if this is how it's going to be? Uh, I, I don't know if that kind of clicked with anyone else, but it's, it's pretty damn disappointing, and I just hope that uh, it's not the case and we get him back. Anything else to chime in on that one? No, yeah. I just wanted to throw something in about the Arrow Lucha, right? So James Storm did wrestle in one of their events. Uh, the same event had uh, had somebody by the name of John Hennigan you probably never heard of. And another guy by the name of Penta O.M. Uh, doesn't sound familiar either. Uh, and some other, some other no-name named Rey Mysterio was also there. 
as well as uh, a, a Taya Valkyrie, whoever that is. So it looks like James Storm must have been wrestling by himself. Uh, there was nobody named Sammy Guerva or MVP on that uh, show at all. And uh, this guy named Jack Evans, who's that? He wasn't there either. Um, well, on the yeah. other hand, Hurricane Helms was there, as was Garza Jr. and La Mascara. So um, yeah, for those for, for those that can tell that I'm being incredibly sarcastic right now, that's a, that's a hell of a card. They filmed in front of uh, a thousand people and sold it out. Whoever the hell that John Hedigan guy is sounds dashingly handsome with a huge with an amazing six pack abs. I'm telling Just you, say, I heard he makes an impact. Yeah, that's right. You want to bang that? You want to bang that, don't you, Raven? There's, yeah, I mean, like my standards aren't that high. Let's be honest, but uh, yeah, I'd, I'd hit it. Um, actually, you, you know, know who's what? booking I, that show, right? You know who the head booker is for them, right? No. Oh, I, I, you don't really know nothing about this, do you? I, uh, you're the first. I've just fucking heard it on the air, and Conan. I didn't even Conan. I was kind of, kind of guess Conan, but you know, I felt like maybe that would be stereotypical and you know, almost kind of racist in its own right. Uh, <laughs> and that's it's kind of a no joke. But... Crash. Crash got yeah. rid of him because he was booking this. I have heard. Okay, I knew that he was done with Crash, and I know Conan doesn't like AAA, and I know Conan, you know, kind of gets in beefs with a lot of uh, companies that he works for, but. Uh, is this shit on TV or is Global Wrestling Network? Nah, man, they have no TV contract, no television deal. Yeah, so they're just as uh, relevant. Actually, they're more relevant just, you know, for the first couple of days than uh, Jeff Jarrett was with Global Force Wrestling. But, I mean, they have a much better roster, I'd say that. Yeah, although, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think what's Global Force down to, like, nobody now. But um, one thing real fast uh, – because Kyle had brought this up on on our past show, and I didn't actually get to get the answer. He, he said, you know, kind of, uh, what the hell kind of name is Johnny Impact? Why they go with that? Just for anyone that else that may question this, uh, when he first debuted on w, on WWE TV, he was Eric Bischoff's assistant. They called him Johnny Nitro, hence WCW Johnny Nitro. So it kind of made sense to me that he went with Johnny Impact as a spinoff of the Johnny Nitro, as he was, you know, the WCW working for WCW. So. Johnny Impact, Impact Wrestling. I'm sure most people kind of got that, but just, uh, you know, to answer Kyle's question that I didn't get to, that was, uh, there was a case there. See, and I uh, thought he was just trying to steal my gimmick and have the most names ever. I, I mean, if he's wrestling, let's see, there was Johnny Nitro, there's John Morrison, there's Johnny Impact, there's Johnny Mundo, John Hennigan. There's at least five. He may have actually already beat you. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it's not know. over. <laughs> Impact has to change his name more. The problem is if they change their name, he probably has to change his name too. So I can't get ahead of him at this point. Son of a oh. bitch, I can't win. I'm fighting a battle I can't win. However, Thank God I he didn't say- change it to Johnny Global Force. So. That's right. Johnny Global Wrestling Network. <laughs> dude, Johnny Global Net- Wrestling Network, dude. That's going to happen too. Johnny uh, Twitch. You know yeah. what, though? You, ha- you know who you have beaten? is um, Papa Shango Kama Mustafa, the godfather, the good father. You have actually beaten him. All right. So Woo-hoo. props to that. Um, I, I aspire to great things in life. <laughs> and you're already reaching them, buddy. I'll tell you that. And nothing's beaten that good father gimmick. Um, you look, the other one that left, uh, which kind of been speculated for a long time, I had some harsh words, uh, but Laurel Van Ness, a.k.a. Chelsea Green, uh, departed from Impact Wrestling. Look, I obviously I said some harsh stuff on on the previous show, my my thing with her that uh, bothered me more than the other two names that we're going to talk about here at the end is uh, she when she and there, there's rumors that she said it before it was given to her, but she was given the championship belt. She was our champion, uh, and then she requested her release. Uh, we don't know if it was before, or after. You know, it's all rumor speculation. But look, the, if you go back during this period when she asked for a release. A lot of people were leaving the company, just flying out there, and we had the Jeff Jarrett departure. And what happened with that Jeff Jarrett departure is that there was a lot of time on television that needed to be fucking edited and taken out. So if Laura Van Ness, uh, you know, they go through and they have this entire knockout championship. This is the after Gail Kim, the greatest knockout of all time, greatest women's wrestler of all time, retires, and they do this tournament to crown the new the new champ. The girl's going to be the face, and they they give her the ball, um, and she she leaves with it. If, could you imagine if they would have had to scrap that entire knockouts tournament because the champion is about to go on WWE TV with it? Um, <clears throat> that, that was one thing to me. Obviously, they kept around and stuck around. I didn't like how she would say stuff when, when she would be asked about it and just blatantly deny it, but kind of sound like she was you know, just part of it. It was just like fucking if you're trying to deny that you're leaving or trying to make it like beat around the bush to say that uh, it's not the case or that they're rumors, why not deny that you're, you're leaving? And 
that was, you know, that shit bothered me. But I mean, like I said on the show, women's wrestling, it, it was always a joke. It was not even before WWE, it was not good. Um, but then they took it into like a bunch of sexy broads, brawn panties matches, pillow fights, all that shit. Like Trish Stratus was a decent wrestler um, that gets more credit than she did because of her tits. Lita, on the other hand, was a great fucking wrestler, and I think she was the only one until the knockouts division was started in TNA and made women's wrestling not be a fucking joke to the mainstream audience, showed that women can wrestle. This was the fucking pioneer of everything. It really was. They were doing gauntlet battle royals for knockouts for women, um, letting women put on the show, steal the show. They were the first ones to have a, two knockouts, a fucking main event, a show. Um, and I feel that for her to be given this belt, this this is the most prestigious women's championship ever. I still don't, don't care to be given that and still say, I want out. I want to go so I can go take a chance and work uh, a women's battle or women's Royal Rumble for the company that actually made what I'm doing a joke to start with. Uh, and my little douchebag fucking boyfriend jobber getting rich off a terrible TV show that most people look back on and regret ever even tuning into. And anyone that actually watched it, enjoyed it was white trash and dumb. Uh, that's what bothers me. But I, I was a fan of this girl. I thought she was great. I would have made her the champion, too, had she were staying for this, this thing. And, uh, you know, I was always a fan of hers, but now it's, it's very disappointing. Um, Griggs, we'll go to you, and then we'll let... I know that, that uh, Impact Dude's got a different perspective, so we'll go to Griggs. Fighting, we'll fighting, fighting my tongue. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, mine and Impact Dude's are kind of similar uh, perspective on this situation. Um, I, I honestly feel that, you know, she had every, any, every right to ask for a release when she wanted to release. I mean, it was it, it's Impact's um, management's and, you know, decision whether they want to let her go or not. I don't think they um, knew at the time when they were going to put a belt on her that she was going to leave or not. But even, even if they did, they had, you know, had to change things up. Maybe they didn't have enough time to rewrite it and, you know, put the belt on someone else. Um, she didn't leave. She at least stayed for the next set of tapings, you know, you know changed things up and made sure that, you know, the title goes on to someone else. Um, I mean, you gotta, you gotta be honest. If, if your employer today, another employer today, you know, goes and offers you or shows you that, you, you know, you can make X amount of dollars, you're probably going to take that up rather than, you know, stay with the current employer unless she, you know, you really don't need the money. So maybe she's looking for a future and sees this as, you know, a good payday. And I mean, I have I have nothing wrong with it. I mean, impact talent's gonna come and go. We're gonna see we're gonna see every, all these new regime have their all their own um, and different guys and everything they they bring to the top. So it was just a matter of time that we're gonna see a cycle of talent come in and out. Um, but it's it's gonna happen, and hopefully she um, guess guess what she wants, and she does well in the WWE. So. So the argument that <clears throat> Raven Fett made before is one that I've heard countless times on Impact Asylum and responded to countless times on Impact Asylum. And, and here's, here's what I'm going to say. What would have happened if she would have left and taken the belt? <clears throat> she didn't. She asked for her release. I'm hearing it's beforehand, right? Some people are saying it's after. <clears throat> we don't really know for sure. Probably won't know either, right? Because <laughs> nobody's going to want to really tell you exactly what happened at this point. They're going to tell you she asked before, regardless of who you talk to. But <clears throat> but here's the thing. She's under contract. Contract says she has to work through June. She says, I want early release. Impact. The company. The company only has to make a choice. They can say, you know what, Chelsea? <clears throat> you got to work and work this thing through June. They can say, you know what, Chelsea, you can leave right now. Take that belt with you if you want. Or or they can say, look, here's the thing. We're gonna, we made you the champ. We had three months right before our next set of tapings. Three whole months to figure out what creative's going to do with you. And you know what? We're going to let you go at the end of those January tapings and let you off the hook early. Okay. Now, you probably can't start filming and being on TV until after that set of tapings airs. So you're probably really not going to be on TV now until, you know, April, right? Somewhere else. And Chelsea says, wow, I, I, got, I got out early. And she says, okay, I'll do it. 
So you put the belt on the girl, and the girl's got the belt. And the whole thing that the girl does, the entire time that she's got the belt, is promote the company. In fact, she promoted the company before then. When she was having her love affair with Grado, she tweeted nonstop putting it over. And never once stopped putting the company over. Of course, she's not going to say, I'm a champion and I want out on Twitter and admit it. Because that makes the company look bad. Makes her look bad. Makes everybody look stupid. It belittles the belt. But she's not going to lie and say that I don't want out. So she remains mum about it. Why? Because if she lies, people are going to call her a liar and it's going to hurt her long term. If she doesn't lie, it's going to look make the company look bad and going to make her look bad too. The bottom line is, is that she came to an agreement with the company <clears throat> and she stuck with that agreement. And went out of her way to promote the company at every single point, in every single turn. Now, over the past year, folks, we have seen champions leave with the belt. And we have seen them refuse to send it back. In fact, they had to come back with a hurricane. That's what I call bullshit. But I don't hear people calling bullshit about the Hardys. No, I didn't hear that at all. I only heard it about Chelsea. And I don't understand why, because all Chelsea did was the right thing. Rest assured, she did not leave those tapings with the belt. She is no longer the champion. She jobbed her way out. She did exactly what she was supposed to do, exactly what she was asked to do. This is not the Hardys. This is not a case like EC3. I know we're getting to him, Raven, where he made every every opportunity that he could get. He promoted WWE and NXT. And it isn't even a case of Bobby Lashley, another name I know we haven't gotten to yet. Who just, you know what, Rain, remain mom, did his job and left. No problem with that either. This is a girl that on her way out made it a point to put the company over, to put everybody that she worked with over as well. And for that, I have nothing but respect. She's allowed to want out. She's allowed to not want to be there anymore. That is her prerogative. The fact that the company let her out of it is on the company. They felt like, you know what? We can remove Chelsea from the payroll and we can afford to bring in some folks that we otherwise couldn't have gotten and maybe as soon. And so as a result, quite possibly we're seeing folks like you know, Kira Hogan, right, and Sue Young, amongst others that just started. So the bottom line is, is that they looked at it as a way for them to free up their, their money, and they did it, and they took it. And they didn't want to have to rewrite television yet again because they already had to deal with the fact that Taya had left. So they stuck with the plan to the best of their ability. It's really hard, folks, to write that many uh, shows for television in that short a period of time and to have to change all of that because somebody who says that they want out is just too hard i mean so look i i, I understand what you're saying and uh I, it's not that i disagree with any of it i i do agree with everything that you're saying but also uh i mean look if uh when she said she wanted to release or whatnot she only stayed there because the employer had the right to refuse to let her out of her contract, and they actually made her come over. You know, uh, it's, who's to say if they would have said fine, she would have just fucking left and never shown back up. Yeah, but that, you can say that about any wrestler like, that's going to end their contract, man. And I feel I mean, like you know what I'm saying. Like you could say that about any of them that want out of their contract, whether they ask for it or not. It's like, oh, I'm only staying because I'm under contract. They honor it. That's the key. She honored it. Yeah, she could have. But okay, and the thing too, like could have been given the belt and whatnot, then show up at the next set of tapings or call them in between and say, look, you know what? I want to finish up at the end of this. Like if you were going to be given the belt and you knew you were going to be asking for your release and this is saying like, maybe she was given the, they knew ahead of time. Nobody's going to know one way or another. It's all fucking rumor speculation. Um, why not decline it and say, no, I, I don't want to be here. I'm not going to disrespect the roster, the championship, the history, the legacy, the company, my peers, the other knockouts and whatnot. And look, I see the way I see it is I feel like when you're given that that belt and all that um, to leave, especially after like what happened with the Jared, all the shit that had been going on with people leaving the company, all the, the you know, the edits and stuff they had to put on TV, um, that it's an insult to the other wrestlers, to everyone that's there. And look, maybe some of maybe none of the wrestlers feel the same way. Uh, maybe some do, maybe some don't, maybe they all do. I don't know. I just, you know, if I were in that situation, I would think, you know what, this is a fuck you. Um, and. Well, they're like, all pretty me, tight, man. They're all pretty I, tight. I'm You've sure seen the picture of her and Rosemary. But Rosemary tweeted, right? Yeah, no. I, I mean, that's, I, that's, I like, that's I like, I love you. Twitter at all tomorrow. You know what I mean? I, that's, that's, an, that's an I love you, you're my bestie for life type of a tweet. So there, there's one individual for sure that doesn't have a problem with it. Because, I mean, Greg, you saw the picture, right? It was yeah. all over Asylum. Yeah, we had that, it on our 
we had it on our Hillcast as a logo once. Yeah, I mean, those two, the, she tweeted that out as, you know, bestie, I'm going to miss you, best of luck in whatever you do. So I don't know that, that they that they do feel that way. And, and I don't know that, that you know, I don't know. I, I guess, I guess Raven, part of the thing is, because I get where you're coming from, too. I, I feel like it's a kind of about the people. Right. And so for 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 Chelsea to to one out, that's her prerogative. I, I don't know why she would want to go to WWE. I, I can't explain that. I'm not going to try that. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. I, I don't know why anybody would want to go there. I know there's more money, but it's also kind of like working for the devil. You know what I'm saying? But I guess I feel like she has a right to. But it makes no sense to me that she'd want to. You know what I mean? And I get it. And I, I do. And, you know, like, obviously, they're going to be close. And, you know, maybe some people don't. I'm sure. A lot of them understand why they would want to go take the money or go to WWE. I don't know why. It, I'm sure no one understands why you would want to date a fucking douchebag like Zack Ryder, but that's besides the point. <laughs> I, well, you could be like, dating like us, right? I mean, come on, man. Yeah. yeah. The uh, RAV, I, I, I would look sexy. And, you know, like, my my job might almost pay me as much as, it, you know, Zack Ryder gets for, like, injury pay when he breaks his pinky <laughs> and sits out for a week and he makes that in a year. But, like... <laughs> And he is in better shape than me, even though I'm working out like a motherfucker. But I don't know, man. I think you're not, I, you're not, you're not building your case, man. <laughs> I know, I know. I really don't confidence have a case. Effect. Confidence when you meet her. Confidence. Yeah, I would. I, my confidence would shatter right in that second. I'd just be like, wow, you're so much hotter than I could ever imagine talking to you. But, um, <laughs> like, you, you said how she was promoting the show and the product and all. Like, I feel, for one, anyone that roster should be, especially how ratings were kind of going downhill. Uh, but it's also, like, the fucking least she could do uh, when when you ask for your release after you're given the championship belt. Um, I just feel, you know, like when the company sees that and they decide you're the girl after Gail Kim retires, like all of that, you're the fucking girl that we're going to put it on. I mean, have some pride in what you're doing and like be like, I would be ecstatic that the company sees that in me. Um, and, and, you know, I wouldn't want to just fucking abandon it. You know, I could wait till my contract's done, but I would have taken that ball and ran with it. And, you know, cause that's a prestigious fucking title and, you know, whatever like divas are purple or pink or multiple, like irrelevant championship she could possibly win in that other company it's just not the same and look she this the gimmick that she did she probably it probably should have never gotten as big or gotten over as it should have but she was also given the opportunity and platform to try and get it over and it worked and i was a fan of hers i I, i've lost a lot of respect if not all of it um for those reasons being but look I, i will say this anthem his anthem was fucking up and may still be like a lot of people wanted out for a reason and they were given that. And maybe Anthem could put their put, foot down and say no. But there's that. And, like, I had said on the show, like, when we did our, mid, our mid-year our mid awards, uh, I put her down as the most improved. I felt like this girl was just awesome. And what she did was good. And her, her work, everything she did was a lot better than I ever expected when they signed her. And I'll give her that, that props there. So um, anything else to chime in on, Laurel, before we head on to uh, the big two? Hit them. Okay. Well, uh, may have already been spoiled on the show, but look, I think kind of everyone knows. Um, I mean, Impact kind of, I feel like it's out there from Impact. I, I saw BQ. Anyone that listened to BQ, BQ put up the names on uh, when he discussed it. But um, look, there was rumors for a while now that three guys were trying to, were potentially leaving the company. It was Eddie Edwards. Raven Effect does not want to spoil this. <laughs> it was Eddie Edwards, Ethan Carter the third, and Lashley. Um, one thing, Alicia Edwards, Eddie's wife, actually fucking worked these tapings, so I think that may be a good sign with Eddie. But uh, we did lose EC3, uh, and then the next night of tapings, Bobby Lashley bat out and left. Um, so speculation for a while. Uh, we'll start with EC3. Um, I, I guess I'm going to say this real, real quick. Uh, I don't really know how we're going to go about talking about this, but um, I, I've always said I felt like there were like household names in wrestling, okay? It's, it's a very fucking rare gem. And, like, my list is going to... I guarantee, like, most wrestling people won't have a list as short as mine. I'll say Hogan, The Rock, Austin, John Cena, Andre the Giant, Goldberg, and then probably Ric Flair, probably Macho Man. I'm sure most wrestling fans will fucking say, like, 10, 15. It's... You are a pro wrestler that someone... Literally no one will ever have to watch wrestling will still know exactly who that person are. And those are the only names that I can come up with. Like, people that will never watch wrestling know who that person is. Um, I feel like the Pope, EC3, and Eli Drake all somehow landed in this company's lap that actually were the rare, 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 rare gems that could go to that point. Um, and I feel like EC3 
should have fucking like been the face of this company and franchise. And they, it's, it's, I don't think it's on his own. I think this is a huge dropped ball. It's not, this was nowhere near the, like the devastation it could have been, say this was 2015 or 2016 that we lost EC3. But, um, this was honestly, this was the only guy that I feel that they had ever booked perfectly, just booked so well. Um, I mean, Samoa Joe was booked really good at his start of his run, but the way that they built EC3 into stardom was just, it was incredible. And um, it just it just went straight downhill from there, and uh, you know I, I really don't think a lot of it was was his fault, but um, I, I guess we'll start with that. Uh, obviously, I'll have some more stuff to chime in, but Griggs, I guess starting from there, uh, what were your thoughts on it right now? I mean, you said you can't blame EC3, right? You said um, for like leaving, I guess, but or you can't see why he's still why impact wouldn't go after him. Um, it's, you know, you know, he's going for the bigger payday. Um, impact uh, is trying to save money. They're trying to balance those books. I mean, you got to think too, easy three Lashley. Um, and a few others were probably the highest paid talent that he had on the, on the thing. So of course, um, Ed is going to try to figure out ways to um, get rid of the talent, not get rid of the talent, but find cheaper talent that would, you know, balance out their books. So if, if you have these top guys and they're not willing to take a deduction, um, then they're going to leave. Um, when you get talent like EC3, who knows he has star power because of impact, um, and Lashley, um, they're going to, you know, try to try to make what's best for themselves. A lot of these stars you're going to start seeing, I mean, and you're going to see it even like it, with the Aries coming back, um, they just either they don't want to work that WWE schedule, or they rather um, work for a company that they can, you know, have their own bookings and stuff like that. Um, so we might be losing EC3 and Lashley, but in the long run, I think you're going to start seeing more more wrestlers um, jumping over to the Im- Impact um, bandwagon too. I guess Griggs, what um, you had said, like I said, I can't blame EC3. I, I've said this for a while, and I look at it like this. Um, when you're basically, when you have the opportunity to go there um, right now, why be a mid-card in Impact Wrestling and get paid less than what you would be to just go do the exact same thing in WWE or NXT? But with him, he also has a the potential there to actually get back to like the main event status, whereas Impact had totally just dropped the ball and ruined it. I mean, if you look in 2015, and this is like the kind of argument I'll go with, and then I'll kick it over to uh, the Impact dude. But in 2015, he was, you know, because everyone that interviews an Impact wrestler has to ask him, hey, what's your thoughts on going to WWE or back to WWE? And he had said that he has unfinished business there, but he had said that what he's doing in TNA Impact um, is, is is his focus and what he's doing there. He loves it. And basically he could, it kind of said like he couldn't see himself leaving there. And then, you know, the the handling of his character and just a consistent downfall and lack of push and kind of ruin him, it, then it changes. Um, and I mean, you, know, you mentioned that EC3 is putting over WWE and NXT. James Storm is doing the same shit. Um, I don't like it, but in fact, dude, I'll just keep it over to you for now. You got some more stuff to chime in, but we'll go with that. EC3, I got two words for you. Fuck it. <laughs> That's what I say. Fuck it. Fuck him. I don't care. And, and and I don't give a crap that he's going either. And, and honestly, Raven Effect, it's it's for a lot of the reasons that you just gave that that you wish that he would stay and didn't think he was going to go. Uh, but I'm going to look at it from the opposite perspective, which is so cool about the heel cast because we so often disagree. And there's no right or wrong. And and it's it's for one, he always said he always left the door open to go back to WWE. He never closed the door and said, you know what, that was one chapter of my life. My life, I've moved on. I'm here now. He always said, well, I have unfinished business there, but I'm happy where I am. There was always that, man, if I could get back, I'm going to go back. And, you know, I don't I don't fault him for feeling that way. I, I don't fault him for wanting to be back there because that is the pinnacle for these folks. And we have to remember that. What I do fault him for is that as soon as that push that he got started to stop. Remember, he was the greatest heel they ever had. I mean, the guy was just awesome as a heel. He was that smarky, rich kid. But as soon as that ran dry a little bit, and they got forced, and they really were forced to make him a face, to make him the face of the company, right? It was over in London, if I remember correctly, that they that they that they turned him face, right? 
as soon as that happened, he really wasn't a very good face. And that's fine. It's, it's, it's really hard to get people to like you, but trust me, I can make people hate me really fast. But as soon as it started to go down a little bit, you, all you started seeing was him start to tweet more and more and more about WWE and NXT. Because now he wasn't the golden boy of the promotion anymore. He wasn't getting the super push. That was going Bobby Lashley. Right? And so if I'm the booker and you're working for me, and as soon as you're not the focal point of the company, you're starting to act like that. Well, I'm thinking to myself, you're not staying anyway. Why should I continue to give you that push? Why should I build you even bigger so you go to the competition big? Why don't I put that money to somebody who won't do it? Why don't I put that money to Bobby Lashley, who's going to be nothing but a team player? Why don't I put that money to Eli Drake, who is, again, nothing but a team player? Why don't I build a new star? Why don't I see if I can't find somebody to replace you? Because I can because the power's in my hands, it's not in yours. And the more that that happened, the more he started to tweet more and more about NXT, more and more about WWE. To the point where he wasn't just slamming Impact, but I didn't like it very much. He was brought in to be a Carter, let's not forget that either. And that probably weighed on him, because all of a sudden it's like, well, I'm Ethan Carter the third. I can't say who needs, in the world needs Carters anymore. He could have found something different, right? He could have tried. He could have worked a different, uh, a different angle. He could have been a little bit more of a team player that way. You know, we didn't have any problem with, with Rosemary acting as a manager for the first year. All she did was get herself over completely. We didn't have a problem with Allie not being able to wrestle and, and, and being a, a complete, I don't know what you want to call it, knucklehead, right? No, no, no. She worked right through it, became one of the most over characters on the show along with Rosemary, right? And then when Rosemary got the belt and dropped it, no big deal. It, it helps prolong my character, get to do different things now, right? Allie, same way. She's she's worked this thing. Laurel Van Ness, again, one of the one of the craziest gimmicks of all time. Never should have gone over. Never complained. Managed to get dropped at the altar twice, and possibly a third time. By the way, don't don't want to ruin the spoilers. And made the gimmick work. But EC3, he just kind of like, eh, I'm gonna dial it in. His wrestling matches weren't the same. Okay, his his feud with Storm was great, but that was because Storm was carrying it. He just he wasn't he wasn't the same in the ring. His promos weren't the same. And when I listened to him, he just he just wasn't the same guy. He wasn't the same character anymore. And if I'm WWE, I'm taking note of that. And I'm saying to myself, do I really, really wanna invest a lot of money in this guy? And the answer is, well, if I do, I'm probably gonna get something, right? But let's bring him in and we'll see what we do. Let's take him to NXT for a while. If he'd have been top star and impact on his way out the door, right? Bobby Lashley style guy would have been promoted straight over to Raw. I don't see any reason why. So that's kind of that's kind of the way that, that, that I'm seeing this, and that's why I'm saying a lot of the same things that you're saying, Raven Effect, but while I saw all the potential, and I love that character too, I just didn't like the fact that he kind of turned on the company. It really left a bad taste in my mouth. So you know what? Have fun in NXT. I got nothing but love for you, man. You want to go with there? Knock yourself out. Do, do your best to become a household name. I think it's fantastic. I love to watch people succeed. But if it does work and you're coming back to Impact Wrestling, don't expect me to still be a fan of yours because you weren't a fan of ours. And that means something to me. I mean, like, obviously, uh, as far as Viking WWE promoting them, I'm probably the biggest hater that, that there is. You know, I, I kind of feel it's a two-edged sword with the EC3. Uh, you know, I think he could have done things a little bit better, but the company could have too. And I really think Impact let him down. And I mean, you talked about his fake push, and that's where it went downhill, which is obviously where it went downhill. And I remember doing this show last year, and I'll take this to my grave. You got me on record, you know, talking about how turning EC3 as a face was going to be a huge mistake because literally who EC3 was and that character in all that made EC3, there's nothing face about it. He loses everything doing that. Um, I mean, I don't feel that it was stale enough to the point that they had to push him face. Like, he was by far getting over. He was, like, the biggest face. Like, he was getting the best reaction, the most over guy in the roster. And, you know, it was the crowd was getting behind him. But I kind of feel like maybe they could have kept him as that heel that people just fucking liked. And maybe they could eventually... Tweeners have never, ever stayed and lasted in wrestling. They've tried, but it doesn't work that way. But I feel like he could have really done it that way. But... I mean, look, after that, the face turned to get a loss to Matt Hart, even though it was a pinfall. Um, and then it was like, every time he would lose, it was never it, it was never like a big deal. And then it just, he started losing way too often. And on top of it, like when he would lose or something would happen, the, the boring, lame, who gives a shit commentary team, they never made anything seem big or put it over. And I think that kind of, kind of hard to start. And then I mean, like, 
Bound for Glory. The creative team pushed. Like, it, it was obvious they were going to push. You want the baby face to go over EC3, win the belt from Lashley at Bound for Glory. But what they ended up doing was they booked themselves in a hole, making EC3 look weaker. And then Lashley looked so strong, they had no choice but to actually put Lashley over. Um, and then, you know, after that, it's just... He never won it from Lashley uh, after that. he ne They put it on Eddie Edwards. He had the match with Eddie. He didn't win it from Eddie, and I felt he should have won it to close out the year. Um, and then Jeff Jarrett comes in. And, you know, I don't know if this is the actual case or not, but it seemed like Jeff Jarrett, in a pissing contest with Dixie Carter that he had already won, takes her nephew, who's not actually her real nephew, and just kind of buries him. And that's a talent that you don't want to push down that low. And, you know, when I see him uh, as the weak link at Team Impact, in a match that he was so much bigger than. And then you see this thing where he eats a fucking pile driver from Phantasma and literally is untouched, left alone. And they walk around him for like two minutes. And then the guy named Tejano comes around, lays down on EC3, hooks his leg, and gets a three count. I've never seen the guy. I don't see anyone in wrestling look that fucking weak ever. And you're doing it to EC3. Um, I mean, that were those reasons where it's like, okay, the guy, you could maybe do a little bit better to keep him around because it's a loss you don't want to suffer. And then it, I know that he's leaving and he was out the door with these tapings, but there is a loss that he's going to eat on these tapings. It is just, it's, it's a fucking slap in the face. But uh, they did let him out early out of his contract. Um, I mean, I don't like that. We were supposed to get him until June. Uh, I have a feeling he's going to the Royal Rumble. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the case. Uh, I kind of got one more thing to chime in, but if uh, either of you guys have any feedback on that, I'll wrap up one more thing but anything no I, I i just think yeah, he deserves ahead. it he deserves it he knocked the company the whole way out man he deserves it sorry i hate i hate to be a negative naysayer but he did it to himself i you know what i know some people are going to be kind of negative to him there i didn't expect him to be like the the next bully ray to the impact dude here but um he's not in he's not hitting that whoa whoa he is he is <laughs> not he has not gotten the bully ray status he has not gotten the balloon race status. I just, I just feel like he, this is what he deserves. But I also don't hear him complain about it either. So he did it. They did it. He's moving on. They're moving on. And I don't see any reason why anybody should have, you know, a foul word to say uh, about him. I wish him well in his future endeavors. I really do. I'm just, I, I'm just sore on the fact that nobody's given him a hard time, but but they're giving Chelsea a hard time. That's the part that gets me. Hey, um. And I mean, obviously, I told you the differences as to why I did. If EC3 or Lashley would have had a championship belt when they wanted to do this, I, I would have felt a lot different. Um, I really would have. Uh, EC3, EC3 did have the belt. He had the grand championship. Out. And he may have been asking for his, hey. for his uh, release for quite some time that we don't know about either, man. So that's probably another reason why he doesn't have it. It's, it's all neither here nor there. It's just that uh, I, I, just, I, I, see a, I see a double standard. You know, I'll say this, like EC3, and you know, the other thing too is, I mean, maybe because these guys were the fucking top of the card main event for a reason, and you know, Chelsea Laurel was not, um, you know, I mean, we don't see us, you know, Chris Adonis, obviously Laurel got a little bit more over than Adonis, but you know, it's it's a big difference when these are the top guys. The, I mean, they main evented Bound for Glory just the year, you know, two Bound for Glories ago. Um, I'm just going to look, EC3 is my favorite wrestler. He became my favorite wrestler. Um, now it's, I mean, it's kind of a toss-up. It'd been him, Aries, and uh, Eli Drake. You know, I, I can't tell you exactly who is my top person there out of the three, but uh, it's obviously not EC3 anymore because he's for a company I don't support. But, um, you know, I've got, like, I've got the EC3 hoodie, man. I've got his, uh, one of his pro wrestling tees, the other pro wrestling tee with him and Rockstar Spud. The, the looks like they're butt-fucking each other that says friendship. Um, you know, I've, I, I love the guy. I'm invested in him. Um, I'll never, refer, like, I, I do want to say thank you for the memories, like the Barbershop Quartet. Um, the stuff, you know, the funny stuff he did with Spud, that epic match him and Spud had. And, uh, like, the, I think the favorite for me was when he sang Shinron Song that time. Uh, I just thought that was hilarious. But it's a double-edged sword for me because, you know, the, the I want to see him have all the success in the world because I do think he can become that fucking household name kind of a star. Uh, he's, he's a great-looking guy. Uh, he's got charisma, promo, interview, all that that's, that's through the roof. But then... I don't want the WWE to get that success either. Um, you know, he's going to have Spud there with him. That The two of them together for a bigger audience can, can go huge. Unfortunately for them, they've got shitty writers that are going to kind of wreck that and, you know, kind of derail the possibility. But I would love to see the guy get all the success and become this huge name. But I just can't. I, I don't want that company that he's going to go work for to get that success again. I, I literally fucking want that company to die. <laughs> but... Um, 
best of luck to EC3, I guess. Guys, anything else? So I'm taking that as a no. Um, and then the last, uh, we lost Bobby Lashley. So uh, I'll say this. Uh, I think Bobby Roode probably had the best world title run in the company's history, but I think Bobby Lashley is the best world champion in the history of Impact Wrestling. Uh, with Lashley, um, the credibility, uh, you know, like he's the MMA fighter. There's a lot of credibility that he adds to the roster that, that is leaving. And I think Lashley, um, all my years watching wrestling, I don't think I've, any, I've ever seen anyone make such a drastic turnaround from their career. Uh, you know, Lashley went kind of green, not that good in the ring, couldn't cut a promo to literally uh, being the total package. Uh, you talk about a guy that's got a, a like a look chiseled out of granite, uh, but Lashley became a guy that could cut a decent promo, but better than anything else is he could he could have a great match with literally anyone. Um, and, and I think the other thing that's devastating about that is there's not a whole guys left on this roster that can do that, and they just lost one of them that can. Uh, and it's uh, it's very disappointing to see Lashley leave. Uh, Greg's thoughts on Bobby Lashley. Hey! How was that? <laughs> um, I mean, I, I agree with you. I mean, I think that um, Lashley definitely was the most improved since his return. Um, he was definitely green before. But, um, I know, I mean, I, I don't know if he's the best you know world champion they ever had, but I do agree that um, he did, uh, did carry the company through some hard times. Um, he was a, a great world champion for them. And um, he definitely is going to be missed. Um, he always, uh, you know, held the company high when he when he spoke of the company. He never um, talked about WWE, how he wanted to go back, and all this other stuff when he was there. Um, so he was a company guy. So it's it's rare to see a company guy or a company girl um, nowadays. Um, there's a few of them I mean, that you can you know pick from the Impact roster that supports the company through thick and thin. Um, Rosemary knows this another one. Um, but those are the, those are the people you want working for your company. And that's kind of how I feel where Anthem decides, you know, if you want your release, you then have your release because um, they they want to have company character, you know, company employees who want to actually work there and not just jump ship. Um, so I'm hoping that's, that's the case. And we start seeing more people actually want to work for the company and not just, you know, get a paycheck. When, uh, when Eric Bischoff got to, uh, TNA, I guess we'll call it one of the first stores of business. He, he fired Bobby Lashley. So Bobby could go off and do, you know, uh, do MMA stuff. And I remember thinking at the time, and has this guy, he's got a great looking guy, but he sucks. He sucks so bad. Uh, but I love this girlfriend. I, I, I thought she had there was something to her, right? She had a bit of an it factor. She could talk, uh, and, and and I figured we we kind of miss her, and um, and so I literally, you know, when he came back, I was like, oh, good God, they brought Bobby Lashley back, right? And then they gave the belt to EY, and they were supposed to give the belt to MVP, but MVP got hurt, if you guys remember, so. They gave the belt to Lashley, and I was like, "Oh, great!" You know, they gave the they gave the belt to Second Fiddle because they couldn't come up with anything better. And and if you remember, that was a pretty bad time for Impact booking wise. We just come off of the reign of Magnus, right? The EY, y you know, he he put himself over when he was champion and after he was champion. But you know, at the time he became champion, I was probably the only person that marked out for it. Um, and and so and, and so and so there it was. You know, this guy that wasn't all that good, and they put the belt on him. And it was hard. It was really hard to get into that title run. But but it got better as things time went on. And if you're trying to look at things and, and you're trying to give people a chance, you're trying to be objective, Guy improved dramatically as the world champion. And then they took the belt off of him and eventually gave it back to him. By the time they get back to him, he was one of the best performers in the company. And we're, we're talking like six months. Maybe it was a little longer than that, but it wasn't a whole lot longer. The guy went from nowhere to a star that fast. And the reason is, quite frankly, Bobby, Bobby Lash is a worker. Bobby Lashley came to work, and he did. And he was never a big guy on Twitter, you know, not, not a whole lot of promotion to things. Because he was, he was a blue collar, I, I'm going to go and I'm going to work. Right? And he did MMA, and, and he worked at that too. And while I'm still not convinced he's the, the, the best mixed martial artist on, on the planet, 
I have a mad amount of respect for him and what he's done in mixed martial arts. But he's a worker. And that's what he did. He re- literally became uh, one of those talents. You know, Raven Effect, you mentioned before about people that fell into the lap. And, and you mentioned the Pope. Uh, and, and my God, that, that that guy had the it factor. What what a miss. You mentioned EC3. I agree with you. He should have been the face of the company for years to come. And and and, and his secondary, his his right-hand guy, uh, so to speak, his, his macho man should, should, should have been Eli Drake, right? Totally agree with you on, on all those counts. But, but Bobby Lashley's also that once in a lifetime generation talent. Once he got his, his, his feet under him and really committed himself to it, him asking for his release, I don't think is a surprise to a whole lot of us. I, I think we know he, he doesn't really know what he wants to do. Does he want to do MMA? Does he want to do wrestling? He's a little bit older. His his time's getting to, to come around again. If he wants to go back to WWE, now's the time. So he's really got to make some life decisions. And and he asked for his release. And they had absolutely no reason not to grant it to him. Guy did everything for the company. Every time they asked Bobby Lashley to step up to the plate, he gave a five-star five star match, guys. They don't have to have a whole lot of flips for five-star matches. But uh, there, there's there's a particular move, that, and I'm, I don't want to give away too many spoilers, that, that comes out of this next set of tapings, which is just freaking off the charts phenomenal okay amazing that 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 a man his size you know doing this kind of stuff he answered the call absolutely every single time mad respect for the guy right mad love for him you want to go to you want to go to wrestlemania go to wrestlemania I, i might even watch it Okay, I'm not going to watch it, but sorry, Lashley. I still love you anyway, bud. The bottom line is mad respect for the guy. He did everything the right way. The, the only thing that, that I keep coming back to is I don't understand why people aren't lumping Chelsea in the same group because I see it the same way. But mad love to you, my friend. You gave us a lot of memories, and, and I'm going to agree with Raven Effect. I'm going to say you were the best world champion ever, and, and I'm going to say your title run was was better. It was absolutely better than, uh, than Bobby Roode's. His very last title run, the one that uh, was ended by Eddie Edwards, was it's on par. It, it may be better, maybe as good, or just a little bit underneath it um, than Bobby Roode's. I'll, I'll admit that. I think overall he was our best world champ, though. Um, you know, it's. Uh, I, I just want to go back to uh, you know you talked about how when he came in, he thought he sucked so bad. Uh, I agree, he did suck so bad, but he also sucked so bad at both MMA and pro wrestling. And I thought that was funny, but I mean. You bring up uh, him winning that world title at Slammiversary, and uh, I always remember this is because this was before we did the the heel cast, uh, and we got to, and we knew each other that well. But I remember uh, both the TNA dude at that time and myself were both kind of losing our shit on Impact Asylum, uh, and we were bitching about Brave the same event. reason. Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you hear me? Cut out of me. I can hear you now. Okay. You may have been uh, talking. You may have been talking. I just couldn't hear you. Oh, okay, well, uh, regardless, you and I were complaining because Impact just put uh, the world title on a guy who not only wasn't that good in the ring, but also sucked at MMA. Uh, and that was like, uh, you and I really kind of were having the exact same gripe on it. But um, Bobby Lashley improved so much at MMA and both pro wrestling. I think the, the thing that when we see Lashley in the ring so improving so much over these years, the crazy part about it is uh, he spends like his off time training in MMA and stuff it's going to be a lot harder to work on your pro wrestling moves in the way that you're doing in the ring. So, I mean, that's, it's just so fucking impressive. And, uh, I mean, Greg, the city was a company guy. The one thing I will say about last year that kind of bothered me was, uh, bound for glory last year, not last year, but the year before, um, there was a lot of speculation that the pay-per-view wasn't going to go on the air and Lashley had kind of, or maybe it was Slammiversary, but Lashley in an interview said, I really don't care if it happens or not. Um, that's the only thing with Lashley that ever kind of rubbed me wrong. Uh, cause I felt like you should give a shit but I don't know if maybe it was a heel character, but it, it didn't seem that way. Um, there is, a, uh, from what I understand, I've heard it from Hurls, who uh, is credible about half the time. Uh, he, the, Lash, there is potential for Lashley to return to Impact, but uh, they wrote him off just in case. But um, <clears throat> look, I'll, I'll, everything I've heard is that uh, they want to do the Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley thing. My, my complaints with that is I just feel WWE is going to go in there and they're just going to have Lashley get jobbed out and you know kind of embarrassed and made to look second fiddle to brock lesnar because honest to god if they had those two fight mma i will bet anyone my entire fuck like literally you could kill me um but bobby lashley kicks the living shit out of brock lesnar and i i just feel like he's gonna made to really be made to look fucking second fiddle to brock if they do the wwe thing and um i just hope uh, honestly though can i ask a question uh, who cares yeah. 
everybody knows Lashley made his name an impact. And if they bring him in and put him in that match, they have to build him up as credible to make the match sell. Even if he does be a three-minute match like the Goldberg thing was, right? And, and I don't think it would be. He does the job. We all know he does the job. Look, you go to WWE, you do the job. That's the way it works. But what a promotion for Impact. Yeah, hopefully. But I mean, I mean uh, you know, it's plenty, actually good marketing. There's plenty of promoting uh, for Impact on WWE, TNA, NX, TNA. Uh, but our, you know, our ratings have still been dropping quite a bit. So, uh, I mean, who knows? But uh, like, also, Bobby Lashley, I want to thank you for the memories, uh, everything you did, the great matches that we've had. Um, absolutely, you know, killer stuff. And uh, I hope that he does return at some point. I would like, honestly, if he doesn't come back to Impact, what I want to see is Lashley focus on MMA. I want to see how he does because uh, I think he could possibly become heavyweight champ in Bellator. Age wise, he's getting up there. So if that window closes, uh, it's coming pretty soon. Um, I, I guess, you know, the kind of the last thing I, I kind of want to go on here, guys, is uh, Impact, what was it, Don Callis and Scott Moore it kind of said not too long ago that what they're going to do, it's going to be like, like kind of revolving talent. You know, you mentioned the new Impact. Uh, they're going to sign and keep like a few guys and kind of build a company around a few guys uh, or a few wrestlers, I should say. Um, and then everyone else is kind of you know, independent, indie kind of stuff going down. I just feel like wouldn't these be two guys that you would want to – build the company around and kind of focus around. I feel like these are two talents that uh, you just are so hard to, to just fucking let go of. I mean, I can, if you look, I look at it like this. So Eli Drake and Austin Aries are the, the two, the two that they need to fucking focus the company around. Um, and then you've got your Moose, Eddie Edwards, Rosemary, Alley, And I can't think of that much more. And I say that because, look, Alberto, he's already said he's, he's not going to wrestle for much longer. He's going to retire soon. Johnny, Johnny Impact, um, I mean, is he really a full-time contract? Like, how long is he going to stay with his Lucha thing? Can they can they actually build around him, sign him to a contract sort of a thing? Um, so that's that's a very small handful of talents I can think of. And I may not be thinking too much off the top of my head. I'm sure I've missed a few uh, good wrestlers on there. But, I mean, there's not a whole lot. And I feel like those two are a necessity. Uh, I don't know if uh, you guys agree there. Well, I so, just feel like it might not be their choice, though. What if, you know... EC3 already had his mind set that, hey, I'm going to WWE. This is my time to go, and I'm going to go now. So no matter how much impact throws at them, he, at, at him, he might just want to go a WWE route. Um, you know, like you said, Lashley, on the other hand, um, there's still a chance, you know, that he, he could come back. Um, that It works in his schedule if he really wants to do the MMA thing. Um, but, yeah, it just might not be his cho- He might already have his decision made. A lot of this, guys, is uh, let's just call it a spade a spade. It is, you know, is is words. So I don't know if you guys remember or not, but uh, Don and Scott did, you know, one of those phone calls uh, last week. I guess it was, and I was on the call, and I asked this exact question straight at Don. I said, "Look, you know, you've you've mentioned that you want to have this core eight talent. Can you can you tell us about this core eight talent and, t- and start to identify some of the folks that are core eight? And um and 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 he said, well, it'll become a little more apparent when you see the tapings, but it's fluid, and it's going to change because somebody new could come in and 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 nail it, and somebody else might not be over, and so we have to allow it to be you know to change, which is all true, right? I mean, we get this; we're not stupid. We realize that the core eight's not going to be there forever. But I specifically said, can you identify a talent that you're going to be? that you've got, that you want to see with you for the next three to five years. There's no reason why he couldn't have named some of the ones he expect to be there for the next three to five years. And then if it changes, it changes. I mean, we're not going to hold it to him, but, uh, but they wouldn't. And it was telling because I don't think that that talent necessarily has been identified. And they're certainly not ready to commit to that talent. And, and I, I get it. If you have a guy that's on the bubble and on the outside, you don't want to say, hey, you're not one of the guys. I kind of get it. At the same point in time, the way you're booking them, you're going to know who that core eight is. So it's pretty apparent. Uh, but it was it, it, a lot of it's just lip, lip service. But these are two guys that I would put in there. And to be frank, when I asked the question, I was trying to get something out of them to see if they were going to mention one of these two names, frankly. Yeah, I- Thank you. I mean, I would love to get the answers, too. Um, I hope it's Eli Drake and Austin Aries is the main two. Um, I mean, Griggs, you said maybe it's not their choice. And, you know, that's the case. Just it just it's so frustrating to think it, the way that this company was growing at one point um, and just how fucking far downhill they went. And I guess, you know, it's like 
how the company, Jeff Jarrett stayed around and Hogan Bischoff, Dixie Burek came around. I mean, maybe we'd be able to keep a lot more of these talent, you know, and it's just, it's disappointing as hell. It's on the company. Uh, you know, we, Kyle and I kind of had this talk, uh, like in our chat and all, I just feel like you know, everyone wants to leave for their WrestleMania moment. Uh, I'd like to hear people say that they want to stick around for a bound for glory moment, but then again, it's on impact wrestling's fault for, uh, you know, a bound for glory moment, not being that relevant or anything. Um, but I mean, you kind of look around and guys like, yeah, uh, you kind of need like that veteran or that over presence to kind of get other talent over, uh, and, and the veteran and stuff. And we don't have anyone any like literally there's none. Um, and that, uh, that's a tough thing to deal with. There, there's abyss, uh, but I don't know that he really kind of gets that reaction that you would have got from like, a, you know, staying James Storm. Uh, eight, for two extreme levels there, anywhere from someone as big as Sting to is you know impact legendary status is someone like James Storm. Um, yeah, I mean Kyle had said uh, that we got to create new stars. It, it, what he said was really genius, and I know uh, Greg kind of liked what he said too. But like, don't give up on impact. We've got to really create new stars, uh, and they've got to step up. And I feel they've got to lock down. Uh, they got to build around Eli Drake and Austin Aries as the main two. Uh, Rosemary, I, I put in that top three, but um, I don't. Do you, do you guys feel the same way about the roster? Anything you want to add there? As long I mean, as Rosemary doesn't leave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I just don't think we'll ever we'll ever get Impact Management to tell us who the core eight is because if that's the case, um, the talent can use that to their advantage. Well, in theory, they should lock them up before they make them the core eight. Sure. So if you're going to make them the core eight, you sign the big contract and go, look, this contract makes you core eight and you're core eight. I mean, that's you know what I'm saying? But um, no, I, I don't expect him to tell you exactly who all the core eight are, but they could have they could have acknowledged that, you know, hey, we want Eli Drake here to be up for a very long time. We want to keep Rosemary as the faces of their division. And you know what? We're going to we're going to we're going to see who else, you know, jumps up. But these are our top dogs. And, and I don't see why they couldn't have named somebody like that. You know, maybe they want Alberto El Patron is one of them, but they could have they could have mentioned names. They could have literally given guys that have more than a six month deal in it. And I guess the thing I look at is eight, eight is uh, not a very big number. You know what I mean? Uh, there's they're telling us there's really eight people we can really get invested in. Uh, and that, that kind of sucks. I would like to maybe see it 16 at some point, you know, but maybe the company will grow. Maybe it won't. But we just I, ha I do have some trust and some faith in Don Callis and uh, Scott Demore right now. And these, do these tapings do sound good to me. I don't know if you guys felt the same way, uh, but I think highly of them. Yeah, I think everything from what we read. I think everything so far looks pretty pretty good. I mean, I think, I think, I think you said this on Asylum that um, that uh, that Scott and uh, I can't think of his name Cyrus uh, have done more than what Billy Corcoran has done in like his whole his whole TNA career. So uh, under this one set of tapings, it's just, it's a truth from if you from what you read. Um, the only thing good from the Billy Corgan area was um, the Hardy stuff that JB basically produced. It um it, it definitely came off as as I don't say crash TV, but it was uh, not total nonstop action. If you don't mind me using the uh, over over used word that we probably shouldn't say anymore. Um, uh, it goes back to my old name. But uh, at the same point in time, in terms of confidence, you know, that we're going to have to see. Uh, Don, in particular, said a few things on that conference call that concerned me. Uh, he said that um, the business has changed, that the territories are no longer a viable option. And I get what he was saying as he was saying it. Uh, he was mentioning that the wrestlers now have the ability to promote themselves, and they hold the marketing power for themselves. And that's why they want to let them keep the gimmicks, right? Because they're the ones that are going to be doing the promotion for the company. And, and, and literally, they can do a better job at marketing for the entire company by using Twitter and other social media that the company itself could never get that, that large of an audience because they're hitting so many different people that the company may not hit. The fact that territories are dead, though, that killed me because it's like, wait a second, how are you ever supposed to run live shows? And draw revenue if you're not having a territory to draw people from. And we see them still utilizing Orlando and, and, and trying to hit the Ontario, whether it be Ottawa or now Toronto areas. And to me, that's them territorializing those areas. 
And I think territories are a great thing. I think they're a necessary thing if you're trying to draw live fans. That's what Ring of Honor does. That's what WWE does. How do you get people to watch the Global Wrestling Network if they can't come to an event and get invested in talent? Right? So I, 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 get, I get a little bit of it, but it's still kind of concerning that he's so dismissive of that. Yeah, I, uh, I appreciate I actually haven't heard the conference call. I know you were on there, so I appreciate uh, you sharing that not only with me, but for everyone else. Uh, Griggs, I don't know if you had anything you wanted to chime in there as, uh, as to what the brother underscore had to say. Oh, no, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm right on with them. Um, I, I did listen to the, the recording um, that they had, um, but it is. I mean, you don't, we don't know what's going to happen. Um, I think he has a different mindset than some of the things that we're used to. Um, you mentioned briefly, um, Raven, about how the company may be, a, may be different if all these other people didn't come in, um, if Jeff Jarrett was still in charge. Um, I don't think TNA would be around if Jeff Jarrett was still in charge. Um, I think Dixie saved the company for a while, um, and then it just got too too much um you know high you know all this high payroll and everything like that but we are where we are now because of bad mistakes um don and and scott are going to try to you know solve those bad mistakes and all we have to do is wait and see if they're the savers interesting Greeks. um i mean obviously we're not going to get into this discussion I'll, i guess to maybe clarify i was saying like uh you know from 2002 through 2009, when Jeff Jarrett was, you know, kind of running things and before Bischoff and Hogan came in, uh, the company was steadily growing each year. And, uh, you know, it was slowly but surely, and it seemed like eventually they were going to become competition to the WWE. I mean, when people came in and changed the entire identity of what TNA was and, you know, all that, we all know what happened. Uh, so, that I mean, that's what I was getting at there, uh, if that makes more sense. But obviously, it's not a discussion. I think we want to spend another hour on but a different show perhaps um guys i'm gonna kind of give like a, a closing thought that i've kind of been wanting to say for a little bit here but uh anything else to chime in before i go there knock yourself out buddy all right so um look when the when they kind of change the name to gfw or whatever i mean anniversary time july um i actually kind of tried to start writing a column for impact asylum about this this kind of a topic uh and it didn't work but I just didn't have time to do it. But like one thing I want to say, and Kyle actually uh, had said something on the show. Uh, actually, real quick, Griggs, uh, the thing you said about Don and Scott doing more than Billy Corgan already, that was actually something Kyle had said on the oh, show okay. the other night. Uh, but um, he had mentioned, you know, the guy could be the next AJ Styles. And you, I hear that so much. Um, the next AJ Styles, next AJ Styles. And, and people will always see, I'll always see, you know, TNA Impact needs to find their next AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, and Daniels to build around and whatnot. And... I get that, and I really do, but we're not like we're not going to get another AJ Styles, another Samoa Joe, another Daniels. We we need to leave that in the past. And I get that you're talking in a way core three guys, but the expectations you're putting on it is so high. Um, what we need to do is we need to find and keep our our Eli Drake, our our EC three sort of a thing. The guys need to come in and. We need to wipe away. And the TNA Impact Wrestling fan, like that mentality, everyone is like, oh, well, as soon as AJ and everyone left, okay, I get it, but it's done and it's not coming back. We need to focus on who we have now and build around there. The company, this young roster, they need to worry about identifying themselves and doing what they do and their highlights and go from there. Um, and I think that's what this company needs. This whole next AJ Styles, next AJ, we need to stop like expecting that or wanting to see that kind of a thing come through uh, because it's just it's, it's, it's something that can't be done. It's an unrealistic expectation, and honestly, like the the closest fucking thing anyone has ever seen to AJ Styles, we've already have him had him, and he's back again. And that's Austin Aries, and Austin Aries can do everything AJ can do, but he's a better fucking promo and talker and more charismatic. But um, it's just we need to see this this company take this young roster and mold some stars into them. And there's there's a lot of them there, and I think that Desmond Xavier is one guy that uh, they really can't lose because I feel that's one to really build on. Um, and, uh, that's, that's what we got to see from impact. And I hope that they do it. We all are invested in this company, despite sometimes, uh, just being ready to fucking blow a gasket with the next terrible shitty story that comes out with management and all that. But, um, it's just, it's time to pull forward, see where this roster goes and have some faith. 
you guys have anything to follow up with on that? How do you follow that? I guess not. You Thanks. don't. <laughs> All right. So look, uh, this ran way fucking longer than we expected it to, but uh, I am the RAV, uh, the return of Griggs. Got my partner in crime, the Impact dude here with me. Look, I want to say, everyone, thank you for listening in. Check out Impact. We'll be reviewing the show this next upcoming week. Hopefully, Barbed Wire Massacre will be there. I think we're kicking into the new set of stuff after that. But thank you very much. Heelcast is out.